Welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church as we gather here together in this modern worship service to worship our everlasting and eternal God. I'm Pastor Mark Beatty on behalf of Pastor Bonnie Lanny, on behalf of Chaz and everyone here. We wish you welcome and hope that God's Spirit is here in this place, but also there where you are as well. We know God's Spirit is, and so we hope you have a sense of that too. Speaking of Chaz for just a minute, Chaz not only is a rock star here, he actually is Pastor Chaz too. He's also a rock star in ministry, a hospice chaplain as well. I don't know if people knew that or not, but just uh, giving a quick shout out for that. And we really appreciate your ministry and all the ways you bring ministry to God. Looking forward to just a couple of announcements. We are in the middle of our stewardship drive. We're going to have our Give Thanks weekend coming up in November 14th and 15th. And in the next week, um, around the 1st of November, we'll have our first mailing coming out to you, members of the congregation, and it will include an intent card. We've often called these pledge cards in the past. We're calling it an intent because it is about your intent of what you look to offer forth to God. And I hope, especially for those who haven't filled out one before, please seriously consider doing it. I really hope that you will because that's the way that we can give from our first fruits, again, as we talked about before, not just from leftovers or what we think we might be able to later, but to to plan out ahead of time based on what you have and what God has first given you and to give of those first fruits, whatever percentage that might be. So we really hope that in this drive, you might get more intent cards. And also for those who are able to be able to increase their intent, if we do that, we will be so solid for our budget this next, past, this next year as well. However, going through the pandemic, if you are in a place where it is going to be difficult for you, we are not asking you to try to put yourself uh, in harm's way with what you would give. We are a community of faith together. It is all about relationships. So it is only for those who believe they are in a good, solid place, a foundation. We hope that you would also increase your intent cards. Some others might need to, increase, to decrease where you are. Remember, we are a family of God together, and it is about relationship. It is about giving and receiving. And we are all blessed to have times where we can give and be generous, and that's what this campaign is about. But there are also times where it's our time to receive, and if that's your time, too, let us know. Let the pastoral office know, too. There may be some ways that we can reach out to your family as well in, in, with confidentiality, too. So as we go forward with this, there also will be possibilities of how to mail in your intent cards, or you can also go through our website to be able to bring those intent cards back. And then we've had a couple of generosity stories. We've had a couple of, of temple talks here. If you have a story of what Holy Trinity, what God has meant to you, what faith has meant to you in your life that you'd like to share sometime, let me know. Let Pastor Bonnie know. We would love to schedule a time in the service briefly for you to be able to share that story of generosity or that story of faith, that God story in your life. Also this week, uh, we grieve as well. We grieve the death of Howard Stith, who died on Tuesday, October 20th. There'll be a small family-only gathering. I'll be with them as well, though, but for the National Cemetery, but to let the congregation know that'll be next Wednesday as well. I think it's only about 10 people total they can have there for that. And then we just had the memorial service for Christine Billies here earlier today and the interment of both her ashes and her late husband Bob's ashes here in our columbarium. It was a beautiful service. I'm sorry we did have some technical difficulties during it, uh, but you can also view that online if you haven't already to be able to say goodbye also to Christine, one of our beloved members. Today is about Reformation. It is Reformation weekend. You'll see Martin Luther and Katie behind us too, probably some of the times. I'm going to come back there for the message as well. And the theme for today is within. So as we keep that in mind, 
Let's go with our opening praise song, Great Are You, Lord. Thank you that we gather together at home here to sing praise to the, the God that is great, the Lord Almighty. And we, we worship you tonight and we praise you tonight and we lift up our voices to you tonight that you might be honored and that you might be praised. And Father, we just pray today that your, your presence would be with us. Your word would rise up in us and give us strength today. In your name we pray. Amen and amen.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. offer for together our confession to God. God of mercy and love, forgive us for turning away from you, for putting other things first in our lives, for the things we've done and the things we've left undone, for not loving you with all our hearts or our neighbors as ourselves. Heal us, forgive us, and strengthen us to walk in the light of your love again. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. 
in his name, receive the good news that you and all who turn back to God are forgiven, blessed, and renewed to live and love again. Amen. We continue now with our offering. All we have, all we are, are gifts from God. So when we give back generously a portion of what God has first given us, that's exactly what we're doing, just giving back a portion of the, from the one who first gave us life and the one who gave his very life on the cross for us. So let us with open and generous hearts give back to God from what God has first given us. There are various ways on holytrinitymarietta.org that you can give as an offering. But whatever we choose to give, I pray you also every single day may give of your very hearts and your life to the one who first gave life to you. Lord, tonight is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34, and it says, The days are truly coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 31 through 36, Jesus said to the Jews, Who had believed in him? If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Then they answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will, we will be made free or you will be made free. And Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a permanent place forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. We begin our Reformation message tonight with a little trivia, and I'm standing right here with Martin Luther and Katie, masks on, a little bit socially distanced as well for this, and also we have all 95 theses with us. What was it then, those 95 theses back in October 31st of 1517 that Martin Luther put on those doors of that church, the castle church in Wittenberg, these academic disputes he hoped it would be that would change the whole world change the whole church and everything that we, that we create, the Protestant Reformation. Out of all those theses, papal injustices, um, indulgences, various things that Luther thought the church needed to reform, to rethink, how many of those do you think? So there were 95 total. When we think about the Catholic church, we often think of a church that 
doesn't change, that keeps things the same. So how many of those do you think have been either recanted or reformed? And anybody here, out of the 95, how many? Any, any ideas? Any guesses? This is our trivia for tonight. All 95. That means there is not one initial division we had in the church between the Catholic Church and what become the Protestant churches of Lutheran and Methodist and Presbyterian and Baptist and so many others that still divide us. Now, there are things today in the modern world, the modern church, that I guess are new or different divides, but it's good for us to know that all those very things that were the issues that initially divided us as a church body, as a Christian church body, are gone. So what does that mean then about what we can do now to continue reforming together as a church, as a Lutheran church and as a Christian church? One of the things that I would think about is how we see the Reformation. Are we a reforming church or a reformed church? And my call is us not to be a duh church, not to be a reformed duh church. Because if that's where we think we are, then we won't change anything. And we'll do things just because we've done them that way. And if, if anybody here says, well, why do we do it this way? Well, it's just been done that way. That's a duh reason. And I'm sorry if you're one of the ones who has said that too, but it really, it's, it's a duh response because it's not an intelligent, thoughtful reflective, engaging, discerning kind of response. We've always done it this way. So may we not be a duh church to be reformed, duh, but continuing to be reforming to get closer and closer to God and the gospel. It reminds me a little bit of the ham story. Anybody heard the ham story? There was a mother who was cooking some ham. She cut off one corner, cut off the other corner, put it in the pan, and started cooking it. And the daughter said, well, mom, why do you cut off the corners of the ham? And the mom says, well, that's how you cook the ham. That's how it's done. And the daughter says, well, but but why? And the mom thought for a second and said, well, that's how my mom taught me to do it. And so guess what they did? They decided to go to her mom's house. So the girl goes to grandmom's house. Grandmom, when we cook ham, you know, we cut off the corners, right? Well, yes. Well, why do we do that? Why do we cut the corners off of the ham? Well, that's how we cook the ham. Yeah, but grandmom, why do we do that? And grandmom thinks for a second, well, I don't know. That's how my mom taught me how to do it. And so sure enough, thankfully, great grandmom is still around. So they go to great grandmom's house. Great grandmom, you know how we cut the corners off of the ham when we cook it? Yeah. Why do we do that? Well, that's just how I cook ham. Yeah, but, but why do you cook ham that way, Grandma? Well, so it'll fit in my small pot. <laughs> Sometimes the reasons that we start with aren't necessarily the reasons any longer, but we continue to s- still keep doing things the same way. Even if we had big pots, if we had big pots, there'd be no need to cut off the corners of ham. But what about our churches, too? Do we still do some of the same things in the church that maybe made sense a few generations ago, And there might have been good reason for everything. There is a time and a season we hear in Ecclesiastes. We also heard this in the memorial service earlier today for Christine Billings. But is that season still here? And if we do things in the church without even knowing why we do them, what is that purpose? So as we continue to be a reforming church, let's look to see what are the things we are doing Why are we doing them the way we are? Does it help bring us closer to God? If it does, let's keep doing them and maybe even expand on them. If it doesn't, maybe that time has passed. And as much as COVID has been really tough and here that we're seven months in and gotten so worn down and I've gotten worn down too, one of the blessings and gifts is to help spur us to continue to be a reforming church. We've done so by necessity. There have been so many things we've changed about worship even having online worship, to have it live, to adapt our services, to help everyone still be a part of worship from that very first week and all the way through to this very weekend too. Having outdoor live worship services every first and third Saturday now, to have Holy Communion and to have people gather in a safe way still. We had never had outdoor worship services on the weekends just out front of the pavilion, but it's a beautiful, wonderful space for that. 
It's through what happened now that we had that reforming. So let's continue in this Reformation Sunday to continue reforming and not be reformed, duh, kind of church, stuck in old ways. And as we come back in person here in the sanctuary, not just outside, and I hope we will very soon, look for a survey coming out too for you to have feedback with that as well. We have the opportunity to do incredible worship, to keep those traditions that are fantastic, that do have us close to God, that we want to keep, that are good for us. But we also have the freedom then to try all kinds of new creative ways to get closer and closer to the gospel. That's what reforming and reformation is all about. And I love that John text too that Pastor Chaz read for us as well, that if you continue in my word, Jesus says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's that reforming that, to, that we are called to keep continuing in the word. It reminds us we don't already have it. We don't already know it all. We are called to continue. But the one that really stuck out for me for this weekend was that Jeremiah text and the word within. And here in Jeremiah, you have the Lord talking about how God has had a covenant with the people of Israel and Judah and yet they have broken the covenant, even though God was their husband, says the Lord in the text. But God says, I will make a new covenant with them. And God says, I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I believe that we perhaps are in a time of that new covenant. And that new covenant also was spoken of by Jesus in that upper room during that last supper and for those very words of institution where we receive the body and blood of Christ and that word made flesh Jesus then dwells within us this is also part of our new covenant where Jesus puts not just the law from Jeremiah but the law of love within us and on our hearts friends in Christ I don't think this is just a spiritual way of seeing it or a symbolic way of seeing it. I think just as much as we take that berry bread and that wine and it does go within us to strengthen us and nourish us in just as real a way, the very law of love of the Lord is also being written within us and on our hearts to be able to, to observe. And that is an incredible reforming and reformation that we can have here's why i say that that it's really truly happening i'll give you a couple of instances when i first came to holy trinity for the first couple of years one of the people i went to visit for holy communion was laura siebert she's laurie johnson's mom and even early on laurie was wondering how long her mom laura would be around because she was bedridden in this care home she was barely eating she was barely drinking and there were various times where we all thought maybe there might just be weeks to go but of course I said the first couple of years that I was here she went on well over a year past what people would have possibly expected and even when she was only mumbling some of the times and she was so hard of hearing when I would go there to visit her I'd still ask very close to her would you like me to give you a hug and she would chuckle and I would get a yes even though sometimes she wasn't fully clear with other things she would, was thinking or saying and say she would give me that yes and I would give her a hug and then we had those words of institution and the bread and the wine which she also then would receive within her to strengthen and nourish her but just after those words of institution there were so many times where even if she wasn't talking the rest of the time even if she didn't seem to be of her right mind at that time even if she had only mumbled or only said yes or no or hello or something but not even a phrase after the words of institution come the lord's prayer and so many times when i started speaking laura would speak right along with me our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And so many times she spoke every single word of that Lord's prayer. And I believe it's because God had written it within her 
and written it on her heart. That even when her mind was struggling and her voice, she was struggling to even be able to speak, that word of the Lord was still written on her heart for her to observe and for her to live. Back in January of 2000, my wife, Dina, was driving on her way to work to Equifax on Highway 400. She pulled over into the right lane, and there was so much traffic back then in that year that you had to back up along the side of 400, bumper to bumper, and stopped. All the rest of the cars flying by in the other lanes, highway speed. There was a big Mack truck in the right lane that had huge concrete culverts it was carrying, and the driver was distracted and not looking ahead for that little bit of time. And suddenly he looked back up and realized all the cars ahead of him were stopped. And he was still barreling at highway speed. And as soon as he was able to hit the brakes, he had already crashed into Dina and other cars. And that little Honda Civic in the concrete culvert that flew off the truck and came right into her car drove it over 100 feet from where it was stopped. And Dina was going in and out of consciousness. She had a terrible head injury. She saw what she thought was a spider web, which was really just a shattered windshield in front of her. The back of the car was mangled. The passenger seat was turned around. The, the, the door is concave. And I'll tell you more about a different story another time, and that's about the person who was there with her. You see, it would have taken the jaws of life to open that passenger's door. There is nobody that possibly could have been in there with her. But she thinks, and I think, that that was an angel with her to bring her peace. But that's a story for another account, too. For tonight... What I want to also let you know is that she said then, and she'll even tell you, maybe even shyly right, shyly right now, she doesn't have all the words of the 23rd Psalm memorized. She knows the Lord is my shepherd, but not for the whole thing. In that time, in the car, when she was just beside herself, when she was such in, literally in shock and wondering if she was dying, every single one of the words, of God's words, of the 23rd Psalm came to her. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Every single one of the words came to her. The word of the Lord has come to us in a new covenant. It is there in Scripture. It is a living word all around us. And God has also made a new covenant to write it deep within us and on our hearts. May our prayer for this day and this Reformation weekend, and as we continue to reform forward, be that for all those critical key times when we most need God in those moments, may that word, Lord, be written deep within us on our hearts. And in those times of incredible celebration and joy and life, may that word be written on our hearts to give thanks and praise back to God. And each and every day, may we pray that our hearts be wide open, that the very word and law and love and will of God to be deep within us richly, to be written on our hearts that whatever may come in each day, the Lord may dwell within us and in us, and his word may lead us, written on our hearts, to guide the road ahead. May this be our prayer together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with the sharing of the peace, and I hope you do have a deep sense of that peace from God, the kind of peace that passes all human understanding. And wherever you are, if there are others with you, please share a sign of the peace with them too. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace together. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Now we also continue sharing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the almighty and all-powerful creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe Jesus suffered at the hands of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Three days later, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, where he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And one day he will return to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, would you pray with me tonight, wherever you are? Father, we thank you tonight as we gather together with our families at home, our friends, and we are so grateful, so grateful for what you provided in our lives, so grateful that you've been a, a redeemer to us, so grateful that you've been a restorer of our lives. You still continue to raise dead things to life just like you did, Jesus. You take those things in our life that we thought were dead, and you breathe life into them, and you bring us joy, and you bring us peace. And we are so grateful for that, and we give you the glory for it. Well, let's pray the, the prayer that Scripture teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
And now may God go far in front of you to guide you, behind you to encourage you, close beside you to befriend you, far above you to watch over you, and deep within you to give you life, love, purpose, and peace. Amen.